Here is Backstory.ie's experience of what took place at the press conference for the EU mission to Donegal, which came to investigate the defective concrete crisis. I'll play the full video of the press conference, followed by a look at how the press conference was covered in the media and share some thoughts about the EU mission to Ireland. We'd been told by the EU press officers that the format of the press conference would be that only the petition's chair, Dolores Montserrat, would be speaking. Just one word of explanation. Ms. Montserrat used the word perita, which is the Spanish word for pyrite. Pirotita is the Spanish word for pyrotite, but this word was not used in the press conference. Please excuse the shaky camera footage. Jack Maloney, the European Parliament press officer in Dublin, introduced Ms. Montserrat. Jack is just off screen to the right here. I'll hand you over now to the chair and head of delegation, Ms. Dolores Montserrat, who will have a brief statement followed by three to four questions. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. The delegation of the European Parliament is composed by Ms. Tatiana Danoka, non attached member. A non attached member is a member of the European Parliament who does not belong to one of the recognized political groups. The abbreviation for non attached members is NI. And myself, Dolores Montserrat, TPP Group, head of the delegation as official members, as well as by Mr. Colm Markey, EPP MEP, Ms. Maria Walsh, EPP MEP, Mr. Luke Ming Flanagan, the left, mm -hmm. and Mr. Chris McManus, the left, as accompanying members. The past three days, we have visited Ireland to follow up on the several petitions received by the Committee on Petitions of the European Parliament on the use of defective blocks used in construction, the alleged non-compliance with the European Union construction products regulation and the protection of home owners. In order to acquire deep knowledge of all related aspects, we had reached an intensive meetings with the petitioners, the national and regional authorities, as well as with a wide range of campaign and activist groups, experts and representatives in academia. We have started our delegation in Letterkenny with a meeting with the petitioners who expressed their ma major concerns about the current period remediation scheme, especially the financial burden on the applicants, the red tape, and the slow progress of the process. We continued with very interesting debates with the campaign groups. The next day we had the change the, the, the chance um, to visit several affected buildings in Letterkenny and in Bunkrana to talk with the homeowners and to have a first-hand understanding of the issue. We then exchanged view with represent uh, representatives of the Donegal County Council and with experts from various fields specialized in the impact of defective building blocks used in construction. We conclude our fact-finding mission in Dublin, where we had a very constructive meeting with Mr. O'Brien, Minister for Housing, Local Government and Heritage and Officials, as well as representatives of the National Building Control and Market Surveillance Office and the Pirit Resolution Board. This delegation is well aware that defective blocks have been used in the construction of thousands of buildings in the northwest of Ireland in four counties with severe health, financial and social consequence for homeowners, their families and their communities. We listened carefully to all perspectives and the often divergent opinions expressed, especially in relation to different possible ways to address the issue. Our exchange fully revealed the large scale and the complex nature of the issue. This is a multifold problem which affects all levels of administration from local to regional, national, as well as European level. The challenge is to urgently respond to the calls of the petitioners and homeowners to get faster help and more effective support through specific and tailored measures for everyone. 
The scope of the mission was to visit affected buildings and to listen to the petitioners, to collect as much information as possible, to establish facts and to seek possible solutions. I would like to extend our sincere gratitude to all the participants and the interlocutors that we met during the past three intensive and emotionally charged days, as well as our solidarity to the homeowners and campaign groups for all their mobilizations and efforts. Their insights, proposals and comments will be thoroughly examined and taken into consideration by this delegation. Finally, I would like to convey to all of them our commitment to include in the final report of the mission, which will be voted in the Committee on Petitions, the necessary policy recommendations in order to approach and address their very important concerns in order to ensure that this situation will never occur again in Ireland, but in the rest of the state members. So thank you very much. So I'm in your disposal. Yeah, Jack Power. Jack Power is a news reporter with the Irish Times. Just in terms of the report um, and those policy recommendations that you're, you're going to present, do you have any kind of sense at this point what, what some of those might be or, or a rough idea of what some of those might be? A ver, no me estaba traduciendo el, el trasto y la última parte no la he entendido. ¿Qué recomendaciones cree que se van a hacer vale. en el informe? Let's, uh, you know, let's arrive to Brussels and, you know, to check all the information because we receive a lot of information, a lot of concerns, a lot of possibility of solutions. But uh, let me tell perhaps, you know, three things. Uh, for us it's very important to put on the table and in the report solutions to never occur again in Ireland, but in the rest of the European Union, of course. Secondly, to improve the plan, the, the scheme plan, to, you know, to, to be more approached uh, and to help um, the families with more flexibility plan, with less bureaucracy um, plan. And then, you know, this is the one of the causes of the problems, the la pirita here, la, la pirita. So, you know, we have your Irish experts, um, scientifics, uh, they know that uh, if we are putting a lot of pirita in the blocks, we have the problems that we had in that houses. So we have the cause. We have one of the biggest cause of these problems in your houses and perhaps in the other houses in the rest of Europe. So um, uh, we're going to focus too in this report about uh, this big problem that it is, you know, a lot of pirita in some construction blocks. Uh, Teich Bangnali had a question from the Irish Examiner. Um, just, just in terms of uh, your meeting with, with the, the Housing Minister, Dara Bryan, did you get any sense from him that he would be receptive to making any changes if the committee recommends them to, to the scheme? Well, today um, I saw the minister and all his team um, really open in the sense that, you know, um, they were open and disposal with our mission. Um, we ask openly to them about all the issues that uh, all the petitioners they were explaining in these past days. And um, I think so that uh, they are going to take into account, I really don't know, but I think so that they are going to take into account our report. And I think so that this report is going to be really positive for all of us, not just for Ireland country, for uh, all the rest of the European countries, because we won as a petition committee, do not happen again in no part, uh, you know, in, in not in Ireland, but neither in the rest of Europe. So. Uh, we find him really open mind and uh, listening us and responding our answers. Perhaps you know, um, not all of us, all of that uh, our questions, but they were open, and I'm sure that they are going to take into account our report. Uh, Tommy Mascalorti. Could uh, this report lead to any uh, legislative changes at European level? Uh, and also, yeah. what concerns are you hearing from homeowners regarding? Dime la última parte. ¿Qué preocupaciones les han expresado los propietarios acerca del plan de ayudas? Yes, um, 
uh, first of all, um, some of the owners, uh, they were, um, well, the, the word is not happy, but I don't have now an uh, English word to explain that. They were more comfortable with this second plan because the first plan was 90% to 10%. So the 90% it was a, a state plan and the 10% they had to put their own money. And now the second plan it is 100%. So this means that the state, the, 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 the state plan it's giving to them the 100%. But it is true that they were explaining to us that you know they need more flexibility. Um, imagine a family that uh, the owner of the house has 73 years old and they have to advance the money and they don't have a possibility to get a new mortgage because they have you know an older age so we need to improve um, measures um, to help the family because the plan it is on the table but we have to put a better plan or, or, or improve the measures of the plan to help the family to advance the uh, to the family uh, part of the money to help the family perhaps to freeze the mortgage the oldest mortgage from the first house so these kind of measures we discuss about a lot of measures so we're going to study in brussels all these measures and i'm sure that we are going to put some of them in the report you know to improve this plan because we don't want the families to carry on their backs all the advanced finance we think that the plan is on the table so we have to improve this plan because we don't want the families to carry on their backs um, um, to advance the money or to you know all these um, problems to get a mortgage it depends on your age and so on so I think so that we are going to study, you know, solutions and improvements um, in this plan. The, the report of special put together could that lead to legislative changes? Um, well, um, I think that now we have a really good. Uh, now we we are in a process in a trialogue in the European institutions, but um, we are going to check all the legislation, of course. But I think that European institutions, we did a big effort to do a good regulation of surveillance on the construction elements. Um, so we're going to check our legislation and let's see if we have to improve some legislation or not. I cannot answer now if you know we are going to propose a, a new reform. But I think that the European institutions and the national government, they did a big efforts to improve our legislations because we don't want this to happen again in Ireland, but in the rest of the European Union neither. The problem is just one sentence. The, the story is very old, starting 10, 20 years ago. Yes, and that during that time, European legislation has changed. Mm -hmm. And the more... Uh, efficient legislation came just last year, <coughs> so it's very complicated legal yeah. problem. Yeah. So we have time for two more questions. Uh, Grant? Um, Ms. Montserrat, many of the homeowners that I've spoken to would say that the, it's not a 100% scheme, but there's, the state says it's a 100%, but um, homeowners are expected to build to 2007 building regulations. So um, it's, it's also an issue that um, they will be breaching current building regs if they use 2008 materials. But perhaps you can't even buy those materials today. That, that's one issue, but um, it, it's kind of complicated to kind of talk about here maybe. But what I wanted to ask you was the petition, the report that you write, how do you see that being used in the European Union uh, to, to, to improve market surveillance going forward across Ireland and in Europe? And secondly, can this report be used in any way to help homeowners, homeowners get true 100% redress? So can it help, yeah. can it help in Europe and how can it help here? Yeah, um, I'm sure that this report is going to help to all of us, not just Irish citizens an Irish community, Irish state member. It's going to help to all the state members. 
And second thing, um, in these three past days, we were discussing about the foundations because 100 percent now it's not including the foundations of the house. So today we were asking about that, and we saw the government that they are open um, to uh, restudy if um, if in the um, in the next help we can include the foundations. But it is true that the foundation, um, it is not made by uh, Pirita, it's made by concrete. The thing is, concrete foundations contain aggregates. Owen McGrath from Geological Survey Island has on a number of occasions said that there's very little aggregate available in Ireland that does not contain some iron sulphides. In the workshop held in Europe on the 23rd of March 2022, Owen McGrath says, that iron sulfides are ubiquitous, as in found everywhere in Ireland. Pyrite is the the initial deleterious material that was of huge concern in Ireland. So what is pyrite? Well, it's essentially an iron sulfide. It's one iron atom and two sulfur atoms in each molecule. It's quite a ubiquitous mineral and it occurs across Ireland in three sort of broad classes of rocks. So I'm just wondering where Ms. Montserrat got the idea that concrete foundations do not contain iron sulfides. Was it something put forward by some state official from the NSAI, from the Department of Housing? Where did that information come from? So um, they are open to study uh, what we can do or what we can add in this state plan about the foundation. Um, this it was one of the biggest concern in all the families that we visit about the foundation. You know, they were worried and concerned to reveal a new house in that all uh, the oh, yeah the uh, all foundation. So we are going to see again all our discussions and um, the experts they gave us a lot of information a lot of right reports so we're going to study when we're going to be back in brussels and let's see at the end what we're going to put in the in the report about the foundations can you put any pressure on the irish state to influence the scheme well you know it's going to be a report both by the maps in the petty committee and as a petty chair, because uh, today I'm here as a head of this delegation, but in the same time I'm the petty chair, I can say that the petty chair, it's, it's a successful um, committee because we are achieving a lot of things when we are going around to the state members or we are uh, pushing for, you know, some um, needs that the European citizens, they have. For example, I'm going to change now the issue but um three weeks ago from we vote absolute majority well unanimity up uh, majority unanimity unanimity in the plenary about um to do not um a, a, a flight company they cannot um, um, um ask another pay for hand luggage when we are going with the flight in Europe, for example. So this is a successful that we achieved from Petty Committee. So I'm sure that um, in this positive, constructive dialogue that we had these three past days with all the stakeholders that we visit um, in these three past days, I'm sure that our report is going to help, it's going to push um, to improve the plan and to stop, not just in Ireland, in the rest of Europe, to do not happen again, um, uh, you know, these defective blocks in the building houses. Not just in Ireland, in the rest of Europe. Always I'm saying today, I was saying, look, you know, this is, um, this, what happened in Ireland um, gives us a big lesson to the rest of Europe. So all this knowledge that the community, the Irish community, the experts, the academia gives not just to this mission, gives to all the European institutions, helps to do not happen again in the rest of Europe. And of course, here in Ireland, of course. So I think so that it's going to be positive, I'm sure. But we are not the court, the committee. Our instrument is politics. And it's up to Irish people now to then to follow and to press your authorities to follow recommendations of the report taken by our Exactly. <coughs> and one final question from Jude Weber. Very, very quickly, um, when do you expect your report to be ready? 
always more or less um, you you know that we are in the last in the last month of the term of the legislature but always more or less um, three months more or less it is true that we are in the last um, fully semester and next semester we have just until April because in May we are going to be in campaign because we have the European elections on on the first weekend on June. So uh, it's expected that we are going to have it in three months, always more or less we are doing in three months. Okay, TG Cahar and then... Yeah. Has this problem been detected anywhere else in Europe? I know you've said it can be lessons learned from Ireland, but is it an Irish only problem at the moment that needs to be dealt with? Well, I can answer this question on the point of view of Petty Committee. In Petty Committee, we are receiving more or less every year 1,200 petitions from all around Europe about different issues, different sectors, different needs, different concerns. And about this problem in the Petty Committee, we didn't receive any other issue in Petty Committee. But I really don't know, I cannot answer if in another country, in a state member, you know, another state member, it's happening the same. But in Petty Committee, we just received petitions from here. That was my question. Ah, okay. uh, to see if the problem has been um, uh, detected somewhere else in, uh, in Europe to the same scale yeah. in Ireland. We're talking about forces, but, uh, but we have heard from experts it was discovered in Canada. In Canada, yes. In Canada and United States. Your experts from here, Ireland, um, they were uh, studying. They visited even. Yes, they've Canada. been in Canada and they were explaining to us that happened something. Um, similar. similar in United States and in Canada, because you know the big problem is this: the gold, little stone, you know, la pirita. So if we know one of the causes, you know, let's put the solution in the you know the beginning in the cause of the problem. So thank you, thank you very much, and thank you on behalf of all the pe um, members of this delegation. Um, we. It was a rich, uh, a rich conversations with all of the stakeholders, and I think so. I know that the Irish maps they know a lot about this issue, but Ms. Danoka and me, we learn so much, and we are sure that all of us uh, we are going to push for you know to improve and to help all these uh, Irish families, of course. Thanks all for Thank coming. You. Cheers. Okay. The main thing from the press conference that stood out to me was Ms. Montserrat saying that the new scheme is now a better 100% scheme as opposed to the former 90-10 scheme where homeowners had to pay 10%. The homeowners I've spoken to have told me that the 90-10 was more like a 60-40 scheme when the details were looked at. And of course the enhanced scheme is not a 100% scheme based on the government's insistence that homeowners should only be given value that applied to pre-2008 building regulations. That is, if you can even find building materials that don't conform to current regulations on the Irish market, that driveways, garages, retaining walls, etc. are not covered, that, of course, foundations are not covered. The max grant of 420,000 is really only a 395,000 grant because any money spent on storing household items like kitchen units for reuse, any money spent on emergency repairs to defective concrete properties to delay having to leave the family home, and any money spent on temporary accommodation while the home is being remediated, those are all deducted to the tune of 25000 from the 420000 When I told Ms. Montserrat that the homeowners I've spoken to don't regard the new scheme as a 100% scheme, she did come out and at least mention the exclusion of foundations. So that got put on the record and somewhat qualified the idea that it is not a 100% scheme. This hopefully helped sway journalists to the view that the scheme really is not a 100% redress scheme. It turned out that after the press conference, the MEP stayed for a while and journalists were able to individually ask questions of the other MEPs. I got to speak with Luke Ming Flanagan and said that Ms. Montserrat's mention of the new scheme being a 100% redress scheme would likely not be welcomed by the majority of homeowners I've met. 
Luke told me that Miss Montserrat was actually very well aware of the situation and that this faux pas was due to meaning being lost in translation between Spanish and English. So this was really a miscommunication as opposed to a misunderstanding, which is significant because it was an error between Spanish and English and not actually a belief that the scheme is a 100% redress scheme. While it is disappointing to see how Ms. Montserrat appears to have fallen for the Department of Housing's apparent charm offensive, not all the points scored were in favour of the department. For example, the significance of Ms. Montserrat saying it's a 100% scheme would seem like a huge win for Minister O'Brien and the Department of Housing public relations experts and a media disaster for homeowners trying to get the real story into the public domain. However, when looking at all the media reports arising from this press conference, I didn't find one mention of this 100% claim. One would have thought that this would be a scoop for those media organizations that have pursued the defective concrete homeowners whining again narrative. But it seems now that any such perceived win for the department's public relations experts was a hollow victory as none of the media organizations present published this 100% claim. Perhaps we have reached a stage where the mainstream media are realizing that the so-called enhanced scheme really is not a 100% scheme. I thought that possibly the reason Ms. Montserrat spoke of the so-called enhanced 100% redress scheme could have been because the team of MEPs had just come from meeting Minister Dara O'Brien and officials in the Department of Housing that morning. And the bite-sized media spin from the housing department that we've come to know could have still been fresh in Ms. Montserrat's mind. There is still opportunity for homeowners to voice their views in a way that influences the Petitions Committee report, as I'll explain a bit later. Much of the press conference was to do with this never happening again, and that hopefully this disaster won't befall other communities across the rest of the European Union. But the fact that this defective concrete crisis is ongoing and that you still cannot be guaranteed that any concrete block that you buy is safe from harmful levels of deleterious materials, it seems a little presumptuous to call for this to never happen again while it is still currently happening. So how was the EU press conference reported in the mainstream media? Unfortunately, I didn't take details from the TV reporter from Spain. There were no reports in either the Irish Examiner or the Financial Times, although journalists representing both were present. TG4 provided a high-level overview of the EU mission visit. To see their new video report, enter backstory.ie forward slash PCTG4 into the address bar on your browser. There was a regular write-up in the Irish Times. However, I think it should be noted that the Irish Times still refers to the crumbling houses across the country as a mica issue instead of an iron sulphide issue that includes pyrite and pyrotite. To read the full Irish Times article, please enter backstory.ie PC Irish Times, where PC stands for press conference. Please enter this into the address bar of your browser. Why is it significant when major newspapers label the defective concrete issue as a mica problem? If blocks with mica are kept dry, they won't suffer freeze thaw damage. A media outlet that does a quick bit of googling about mica will logically accept the idea that keeping these blocks dry is an answer to the problem. For the wider unaffected public to empathize with homeowners, it is necessary for them to understand how the behavior of iron sulfides is different, as iron sulfides cause homes to suffer an inevitable agonizing long death as they crumble to nothing. The wider public need to understand that they are also affected when you consider that businesses, community centers, libraries, council offices, schools are also affected by this crisis. On the RT website, there was an article titled Call for Changes to Defective Blocks Grant Scheme, 
which also featured the accompanying 61 TV news report. In the segment, an RTE journalist interviewed Miss Montserrat, who mentioned a 73-year-old homeowner struggling to find additional funds. Then, contradicting Miss Montserrat's earlier statement, Chris McManus, a Sinn Féin MEP, claimed the scheme is not a 100% redress scheme. And Maria Welch, the Fine Gael MEP, said she would be bringing back the human lived experience to her leader, Leo Varadkar. The written article's content mirrored what was shared in the TV news report. The written report also said that Colin Markey, a Fine Gael MEP, emphasised the need for zero interest loans. However, zero interest loans won't benefit homeowners if they can't find pre-2008 building materials at prices from that time to rebuild their homes. And Maria Welch, the Fine Gael MEP, suggested there should be increased access to credit. This implies she acknowledges the scheme is not providing full 100% redress. Consider a homeowner like the 73-year-old mentioned by Ms. Welch's EPP colleague, Ms. Montserrat. Such homeowners can't take on loans if they don't have the means to repay them. Without necessary funds to cover the scheme shortfall, it wouldn't be practical for such homeowners to even try and participate in the scheme. To read and watch the RT News Report, please enter backstory.ie forward slash PCRTE into your browser's address bar. On the Donegal Highland Radio News website, Luke Ming Flanagan discussed the EU missions investigations in Ireland. He also expressed some criticism directed at the Fine Gael MEPs. But for me, there was one major thing missing, and that was an apology from the MEPs who were there from the government parties. And while I'm only delighted uh, that anyone will come up and have a look at the situation, I think it's important that people acknowledge when they've done something wrong. And having listened to uh, the homeowners up there and having listened to the experts, and we've been doing this for the last three years and for longer than that, I think an apology is certainly something that should be given because it's clear that people have been let down here. The full segment from Highland Radio News is worth listening to. Please enter backstory.ie forward slash PC Highland News into the address bar of your browser. A more in-depth explanation of Luke's frustration with his Fine Gael colleagues is worth reading at the Donegal Daily. Please enter backstory.ie forward slash PC Donegal Daily to read the article. It's worth noting that Colin Markey was absent from the Petitions Committee meeting on December 1st, 2021, when homeowners from his EU constituency presented their initial petitions. On the 9 till noon show on Highland Radio with Donald Kavanagh, the day following the press conference, Kavanagh challenged Colin Markey in an interesting segment. After Markey described all the things he had learned during the EU mission to Donegal, Kavanagh gave a curt reply and went on to seek a response to Luke Ming Flanagan's suggestion that the Fine Gael MEPs should have apologised. These issues are issues that have been well documented by campaigners uh, and have been for quite some time. Can I put to you a comment by Luke Ming Flanagan, MEP, who said he expected, well, he didn't expect, but he wants the two Fine Gael MEPs uh, to apologise because he says the frustration that you and the other European MEPs that were present in Donegal and elsewhere over the past number of days, the frustrations that you will have encountered, the problems you'll have seen and the frustrations of the people living in those houses are frustrations born of the fact that your party and government over several years has utterly failed to address the situation. I think the Lock Fine Gael and government have, have put forward originally the 1920 scheme, the 1910 scheme and now it's 100% up to only up to 420,000. So like they have put that in place. It's it's a package of well, not of 2.2 billion. How could a figure of 2.2 billion be estimated when no survey has been done as to how many houses are going to require what remediation type? So to say the government hasn't done anything in relation to this is just not fair. Uh, I think it's not enough. We need to do more. We need to address some of the issues that we've just talked about. And we need to address the concerns that people have, the like of whether or not foundations need to be addressed whether or not, whether we can get greater flexibilities and less bureaucracy in the system. It's clear 
people don't have the confidence in, in to, to take up the scheme at the moment. And we need to address some of the issues around that and the roadblocks around finance. And that's what we're about here. We're not about starting to starting pointing fingers of a blame game. I fully accept that we would like to have this dealt with years ago. But it is a complex situation. The finance has been put on the table. The finance isn't enough. It needs more than it needs more like the grants have put on the table, I suppose. But it needs more than that. It needs skills, it needs availability of finance so people can access those grants. It needs to, and it's not just like at the end of the day, the the, the various stakeholders, like the government, the a the county councils, the the, the, the banking sector, all the stakeholders that they have to come together to get this solution. I fully accept that it isn't as far on as we'd like it to be at this stage, but the only way we'll move on further is to deal with the issues and not looking to, to try and uh, get a political, make a political football out of it. We want to get the issue resolved and that's where my concern is. So if we can at European level identify, let's say, through the ECB where we can uh, get the finance or indeed look how we can build capacity in terms of availability of skills. That's what we need to do, not start a political football that just drags the thing out for more and more years. When talking about the political football, one needs to remember that there has only been one team effectively on the government pitch for the last few decades. One also has to wonder if the Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil campaign slogan for the next election is going to be we need to do more. To watch the full interview on the Highland Radio YouTube channel, please enter backstory.ie forward slash PC Highland noon into the address bar of your browser. Colin Markey was also on RT Radio's Drive Time after the press conference. The Drive Time segment started with a very high level overview of the EU mission to Ireland by Miss Montserrat. Then there was an interview with Colin Markey where you can hear all the usual platitudes. However, in the midst of all that, Cormac O'Hara asked Marquis this simple but important question. Why do we need MEPs to come from Europe to, to realise that we need to resolve this for the families ASAP? I think it just needs to put an extra push on in terms of the different issues that need to be addressed. Like that Why financial do we need issue. that as a question? Yeah, because ultimately, the, the, it's not moving fast enough. That why, is the why bottom not? To listen to the full interview on Drive Time, please enter backstory.ie PC drive time into the address bar on your browser. More importantly, though, was O'Hara's interview with Miss Montserrat just before she flew back to Brussels. She had some important information on how the Petitions Committee report will actually be drafted. How long will it take you to complete and compile your report? Um, three months because um, it is different steps. First, I have to do a draft report. Then I'm going to send it to all the political groups. Then they have time to do an amendment. And then uh, we're going to vote in the petty committee. So more or less, it's about two and three months. This suggests that homeowners still have the power to shape the content of the report by reaching out to their MEPs, who can contribute to the report and will later vote on its final content. So homeowners can still influence the report by contacting their MEPs. To find contact details for your MEPs, enter backstory.ie forward slash Irish MEPs into the address bar of your browser. In summary, here are three points to consider. One, it's good that the national media didn't blindly repeat the miscommunication about the new scheme being a 100% scheme. Two, the petitions report will be used to add weight to the homeowner-led EU complaint that aims to force the government to properly resource the market surveillance office. And three, homeowners can still influence the report by contacting their MEPs. If you are a researcher or a journalist who has been informed by this volunteer unpaid effort, please credit by linking to and mentioning backstory.ie. Thanks.